so excited to take you on a virtual trip to Copenhagen in Denmark. I'm going there today. You're coming with me. Thank you so much for coming with me. Now, I know this much about Denmark. I really know nothing. I have this huge passion for a lot of countries, but I've just really never turned my attention to Denmark before. So I'm really excited to be able to do that and to learn more. Now, of the information that I already knew, there is a really amazing band in Denmark by the name of Vik, the main singer songwriter Elizabeth Vik being Norwegian. So their language is a lot Norwegian, but they're based in Copenhagen. What else do I know about Denmark? Oh, there is a Tasmanian born lady who is the princess of Denmark. That's something else that I know. And I also know that some of my favorite food in the world is Danish. No, I actually mean it's Danish, like Danishes. Now, they don't call them Danishes in Denmark, but probably a lot of the Western world does call them Danishes. They're little pastry items made of a lot of butter and a lot of deliciousness. So I am going to be attempting my first go at Danishes today. Now, I have read the recipe. I have done a lot of research. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and I can tell you now that this is a bit of work. I can also tell you now that I'm going to so greatly appreciate being able to buy some freshly made Danish for four dollars without having to do all of this work. So this is going to bring a new level of appreciation to eating pastry. All right, let's do this. Here we go. So we have some flour, we have sugar, egg, some butter, unsalted in this instance, but we're gonna add salt, so I don't understand that really. Some milk, um, some dry yeast, but I'm gonna put a little bit of cardamom um, in the dough. That could be a bit of improvising, but anyway, we're gonna give this one a whirl. So let's get to it. Take a look at these babies, little cardamom pods. So we're just gonna mash up one or two of those. So the butter is cold, which is essential for it all not going into one heck of a mess. I'm really glad that it's winter time in Brisbane because this would already be melted if it was summer. Add the butter is cute and it, I suppose. Let's just do this little thing. So the, the consistency of the flour has sort of turned to like little peas. Puppy, saying hello to everyone. Are you saying hello to everyone? Hello, darling. <laughs> so in this bowl here, I've just uh, whisked an egg, uh, some milk and some water, whisked that together and just popped it into a bowl with the flour and butter mixture. Now, this is actually not the traditional way of making Danish. The traditional way is a lot longer. What I'm doing now is folding until it is evenly moist. Moistened. I've just cleaned up the workspace because I'm going to need to bring my dough onto the bench onto a piece of plastic film. It's quite wet. And evenly wet. <laughs> That's what I've asked for. Step one is done. My dough is made or mixed for the first time. And I'm about to pop it in the fridge for a minimum of three hours. It could also be overnight. Oh. Appreciation factor for picking one up from the local bakery is very high right now. So in the meantime, we're gonna make the filling for the Danish. Now, instead of the individual Danish pastries that we call them in Australia, little Danishes, I'm gonna make one Danish bread or a braid. It's still going to be sweet, but it's gonna be something that is shareable. Um, and inside this, we're gonna put some pear and almond. So I've got um, some Bosk pears. Uh, I'm gonna chop these up and cook them in butter and Sugar, hmm, yum. <laughs> Let's get to it. I think um, butterscotch sauce. This is what this is essentially. Butterscotch sauce. Whilst 
of their cooking, um, I'm going to make uh, the almond paste. So we've got some almond meal, the remainder of my butter, which is actually room temperature, some salt, some sugar. Just going to make it into a paste, paste it, work it. Oh yeah, it's starting to really look like almond paste. French call it like French or French or French or French I mean that just with ice cream, that's it. I can't believe you have to wait till tomorrow to eat this. This is like a real test in patience. So the dough has been resting for three and a half hours um, and it's time to start, or we'll do our first roll for the pastry. Um, this still has many steps left, so this is just one. And just when you thought you could rest and relax, it's time for one more fold and roll. Roll and fold. Roll and fold. Yeah, you can still see the grains of butter in it, but um, yeah, it's starting to come together really beautifully. So if you were doing this the traditional way, you would laminate the butter in between the pastry, in between the flour and the dough. But um, we're kind of doing it the, the kind of short way, I suppose. Looks like it's going to be Sunday morning pastry. Sunday morning, the time when you want to be eating a delicious Danish pastry with coffee. Instead, I've got to make it. <laughs> So we are we have had our um, pastry dough rested overnight and what we're going to do this morning is roll it out, put our filling in, let it rest one more time, oh I'm going to be starving, and then we're going to bake it. In. We just want to match up as much as possible the opposite side with the little cuts in the same space so that our braid is not off centre. We are not after perfection. I repeat, we are not after perfection. We are after delicious, actually. We're putting the pear mixture, the pear and almond uh, paste that I made yesterday down the middle. I'm just going to soften them a little bit so it's easy to manipulate. Yes. I'm going to have to do a botch job here. These are the times you wish you weren't filming. Because <laughs> you're getting into hands. Yeah. As gentle as possible with my fingers, doing my best. That's what we're doing. And I'm going to pop my pears. They've also cooled down. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I've never done this before, but let's give it a go. So I feel like we're just going to go like this and like this.
Oh my god, this looks so good. Check that out. I'm gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and rest it for another hour. Then it's time to cook. Do you have anything to say about the pastry? Would you like some pastry? No thanks. This is just awkward now. We are truly on the home stretch now. So the pastry and the braid has been resting for almost an hour, but I'm happy that it's ready. So, you know, when I press the pastry, it just slowly bounces back. And we're just going to lightly brush the whole pastry now with some of the egg wash. I'm pretty impressed with myself. In it goes. Leo and I are very patiently waiting for our pastry to rise watching it, watching it happen. <laughs> what do you think about that, Leo? Mm. What do you think about that? <laughs> what do you think about that? this bit all came together. Okay, the last thing to do is to pop a little glaze on it. So I have just heated up a little bit of um, apricot jam that I bought from the store. And I'm just going to lightly glaze this. I have not even tasted it yet and I'm incredibly satisfied with what I have made. Voila, 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 voila. Honestly, the only thing left to do is make a coffee and eat it. It's time, it's time to do this. Okay. Mmm. Mm. The pear is amazing. The pastry is less like pulley and stretchy than elastic than um, pastry that I'm used to, like the Danish here in Australia. I've never been to Denmark. It almost feels more like short crust-ish pastry. Um, it's really delicious, very buttery. And I wonder if like laminating the butter in between the rounds of flour would actually change that and make it more elastic, but it's Oh, really delicious. I have a little conundrum. I don't want to eat all of that. Time to call friends. What a perfect Sunday morning. Oh. That's what I was after. We did it. Shirek, you cook